Death by chocolate. You're allergic to chocolate, said Dr. Doom. Eat it and you'll probably die. Jelly babies are allowed, said Mum with a glint in her eye. What about licorice all sorts, Dad said later on. Or wine gums or fruit pastels or sugar-free chewing gum. I only like chocolate, I shouted out, almost starting to beg. I'd give anything for a Malteser, a Snickers or a cream egg. You're allowed a word as original, or a chew, or a lollipop. But make your mind up, will you? I'm going to the shop. I'll have a 20 pence mix, a strawberry lace, and a packet of football cards, and half a pound of aniseed twists. You know the ones in the jar? I'll have a look, me dad remarked, slamming the door with a bang. Mum was about to say something, but then her iPhone rang. I climbed the stairs two steps at a time and I bounced onto the top of my bed. I pulled up my pillow and there it was, my secret Cadbury's cream egg. I removed its foil and stirred at it, melting in my palm. Dr. Doom was definitely wrong. Chocolate could do me no harm. I placed the egg onto my tongue and savoured its taste and smell. The chocolate and cream melted away, but soon I was feeling unwell. I suddenly collapsed onto the floor and I died in my bedroom. But it's nobody's fault except my own. I just didn't believe Dr. Doom. I'm fed up of I'm fed up of freezing cold toilet seats, cardboard tasting shredded wheat, Grandad's ancient mobile phone with his very embarrassing ringtone, hurry spiders buzzing bees, falling off my bike and scuffing my knees, a mountain of homework as big as ever rest, personal targets and yet another test. Getting my hair cut when it's not very long, mental mat because I'm always wrong. My little sister wrecking my room, cooking in a cauldron, flying on her broom. Indoor play when it's only spitting. My school pants, because they're always splitting. Reading out in front of the school, forgetting my words and feeling a fool. Tidying up my little bedroom, losing my PE kit, doom and gloom. Snapping my coloured pencils lead, that happens to be my favourite red. Having to do what I'm told, eating toast when it's soggy and cold. Mrs. Markham's big red pen, spoiling my work again and again. Opening up my packed lunchbox, her bomb has exploded, me yogurt squashed! Cleaning out my rabbit's hutch, counting my money. I've not got very much. Patiently waiting for my tea, fish and chips and one sloppy pea. Running out of sugar puffs, hearing my mum shout, hey, that's enough. Doctors and dentists, they're all the same, making you wait and forgetting your name. Aunties and uncles you don't even know, half-term holidays with nowhere to go. Supermarket trolleys, oof, banging my heel, or choosing a trolley with a wonky wheel. <laughs> Learner drivers going slow. Rain and hail and melting snow. Oven chips that have no taste, so I'll leave them on my plate. What a waste. Brown bread with hundreds of seeds, doing the garden and pulling up the weeds. But the worst of all, my fed up stuff, is toilet roll. And I've had enough. Going to the toilet is an issue. The toilet roll's empty. Where on earth is the tissue? It's vanished. It's disappeared. It's fallen down the drain. Or somebody's wet it like paper in the rain. The whole roll's been used to wipe a dinosaur's bum. So I have no choice. I've got to shout for me. Mom! I wish I could be James Bond. Just imagine that. What would you do if you could do that for just one day? That's all. One day. Well, here's my poem about it. I wish I could be James Bond for just one day. And if I was, I wonder what all my friends would say. 
My life would be exciting, full of danger and thrill if I turned into 007, licensed to kill. Just imagine the things that I'd be allowed to do if my little wish was to ever come true. I could fly a helicopter at 500 miles an hour, chasing a terrorist to the top of the Eiffel Tower. I could fire a submachine gun up into the air or push a nasty villain down a steep flight of stairs. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? The name is Bond. James Bond. Get out of my way. I could drive down a motorway at any speed I liked, in my Aston Martin car or my Triumph motorbike. I could share a McDonald's with Her Majesty the Queen, discussing my missions in the countries I had seen. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? The name is Bond. James Bond. Get out of my way. I could play with M's inventions, unbelievable gadgets, disappearing into crowds, mingling like magic. I could meet up with Q in exotic locations, secretly planning dangerous operations. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? The name's Bond. James Bond. Get out of my way. I could speed through cities in my Range Rover Vogue, escaping the gang of an evil rogue. I could pilot a speedboat, or a mini submarine, or run on the roof of a high-speed train. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? The name's Bond. James Bond. Get out of my way. In every major city, I could have a gorgeous girl, whining and dining all over the world. I could climb aboard aeroplanes, travelling first class, drinking vintage champagne in a tall crystal glass. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? The name's Bond. James Bond. Get out of my way. I could kill a spy with a single karate chop and jump the queue in a fish and chip shop. Queuing in Tesco wouldn't be my style. I'd push to the front in a packed checkout aisle. And if the manager screamed, Hey, your behaviour's shocking. I'd press my exploding club card. <laughs> and run off with my shopping. And if a policeman stopped me, what would I say? Uh, I'm very sorry, officer. I'll just go back and pay. I like that one. I wonder... I wonder what a goldfish thinks about swimming in a bowl. Is he dreaming of a bigger tank? Or a long lost family show? Is he waiting for another fish to share his watery home? Or is he happy all alone, king of his own glass dome? I wonder. I wonder what a parrot thinks about sitting in a cage. Is she happy talking and squawking, a performer on a stage? Is she dreaming of her jungle, longing to stretch her wings? Or is her spirit fading, forgetting what freedom brings? I wonder. I wonder what a brown bird thinks about, dancing in the street. Is he happy on his chain, skipping to the beat? Is he dreaming of a mountain, or a forest, or a meadow, or praying for a future and a better tomorrow? I wonder. I wonder what an old lady thinks about sitting in her chair. Is she happy in her home, smiling with a stir? Is she recording her husband, the perfect wedding day, or remembering her friends who've sadly passed away? I wonder. Two baby elephants, Audrey and Claude, went for a swim at the baths. They jumped and dived and splashed in the water, which was fun and a lot of laughs. I've had enough! A lifeguard screamed, please climb out of the pool. 
You two naughty animals have broken an important rule. Why, what's up? Asked Audrey. We haven't done anything wrong. The lifeguard stirred and shouted out, Your trunks are far too long.